Time now for our weekly entrepreneur segment. A free fuel price prediction app, Full App, has made a comeback and is here to make motorists' lives easier. The app was initially launched in 2015 and helps consumers save at the pump by alerting them in advance about changes to the fuel price. Let's speak now to its developer, Fabio Langano from Touch Foundry, and he joins us virtually from Cape Town. Fabio, thanks for your time this morning. Uh, you launched, the app was launched back in 2015. It's now been resurrected. Talk to us around um, the genesis of Full App back in 2015. What led to its development way back then? Um, why you felt it died off a bit and now um, it being reintroduced? Introduced. Right. So um, thanks for having me. Good to be here. Um, we first launched in 2015, I guess, as an answer to um, you know the, I guess the, the economic uh, difficulties that us as South Africans uh, experience at large. Um, you know, from a business perspective, we sort of shifted focus. After a while, we we moved into other strategic projects, and it seemed like now was a really good time to sort of bring it back where there's you know. Um, increases in exchange rates, increases in uh, oil prices and the cost of fuel, the cost of transport. Um, so, yeah, really now was a good time to relaunch it into market to, I guess, help South Africans save. Your team must have felt that even though this information is widely available to people, it is a lot of information. And we are, as users of the Internet or of the media, we're quite overwhelmed by the amount of information out there. And it all moves mm -hmm. very quickly, especially here in South Africa, mm -hmm. if, you, if you try and keep abreast of its news cycle, as we do for a living here um, at ENCA. Uh, did your team believe that this kind of app was needed just to help uh, people come to grips with a very important information and to make it easier for them to access it when they needed it? Yeah, exactly. I think you, you hit the button there is when. Uh, so just in time information is really important. And especially in, I guess, an economic situation where a lot of people are working according to uh, budgets, uh, timing is everything. So you know, knowing uh, when the price of fuel is fluctuating and uh, by how much it's going to be fluctuating, because it's not only petrol, it's diesel as well, which is an unregulated fuel source. Um, you know, timing can be the difference between a few hundred rand uh, saving at the pump. Um, considering as well now with the load shedding crisis, uh, many people have generators, diesel generators, businesses have generators as well, which run on petrol, which run off diesel. Um, and it's important to know, you know, when would be most optimum to, to fill up the tank. A feature which we'll be rolling out shortly after, and obviously we just wanted to get this piece to market, uh, but a feature that we are working on now is to help consumers actually know where they can get the best price of fuel. Um, as you know, diesel is regulated from pump to pump, so knowing where is actually quite important sometimes. And we can extend this into gas as well, coming up into winter. Um, the price of gas, uh, like, like petrol or diesel, uh, will fluctuate depending where you buy from. Um, this is going to be a very difficult question, but I need to ask you if you can explain in layman's terms exactly how you go about populating an app like this with ongoing information. Do you have a person locked in the room mm -hmm. that's filing through all the information and loading it um, on the hour every hour, or do you set up a few computers that do the work for you? Yeah, fortunately, we're in the day of automation. So mm -hmm. for the most part, it's us uh, scanning reliable uh, sources of information. So we're considering things like the exchange rate fluctuations, the oil buy and sell rates, and there are some other sort of government released um, sources which are reputable that we sort of scour and we pull that into uh, into the database. So this is an ongoing uh, process. And even the predictions that you'll see in the app, those predictions are informed by real live data. So you might get an update in the prediction every day or two days. Uh, depending on, you know, if there's a significant changes in the source of the information that we're scraping. Um, I hope you, uh, uh, your team wouldn't take it as an insult, but I see it has been described, full app has been described as the SCOMs, the push, but for fuel, uh, because I, I really do think it's a compliment, because in my opinion, as a user uh, uh, on the other end of apps like this, Eskom's The Push is a, an app that really took the use of apps mainstream. Before, uh, it would have been early adopters or people who are techno savvy or younger mm -hmm. people who have all kinds of apps depending on their niche interests. And Eskom's The Push came along and people who had never used apps before knew that they need to find somebody to explain to them or a young person in the house household, put this thing on my phone so that I know when the load setting sessions are going. And it's just flown since then. What has been the influences of apps like that? And how has it impacted it on the work, the type of work that you and your team do going forward? 
Yeah, so Escom's push is a really good example of an app that serves a very niche uh, purpose, of, you know, a one function app. And that was also, you know, when we uh, uh, started the app in 2015, that's what it aimed to be. So uh, not an app for everything for everyone, you know, just a single function app that serves a very high value purpose. Um, and, you know, as the prevalence of these apps, uh, you know, make it into the market, into the mainstream market, uh, I guess the consumers are generally better educated into, you know, what they might need or download an app, uh, use or download an app for. Um, I guess from our business perspective as consultants, as a company who develops these kind of applications or programs on on uh, on requests uh, for, for customers or other uh, small and medium sized businesses, um, you know, there is an awareness seeing that the market is, um, I guess, maturing to a sense that, you know, it's not only the young kids with the smartphones that have access to these uh, apps with even more advanced features. Now, with the prevalence of these apps, it's a lot more, I guess, accessible to the market and um, for people to consume that information in a way that makes sense in them, either by push notification or, or real-time updates. So, yeah, I think I think applications like Escom to push that target, you know, LSMs and different user groups you know, country, nationwide, worldwide, for example, the similar type of apps um, re really help for these apps to kind of make their, make their stance in the market. From an entrepreneurial point of view, um, how do you make money off these apps if it's freely available? Mm, yeah, that's a good question. So for us, um, the primary focus or objective for this app is really for us as a consultancy to really kind of give back. That's that's one of the strategic, strategic objectives. Um, obviously, we're, we're making money on, on consultation and we also do want to give back to SA. Uh, we also use it as an opportunity for us to keep our talent uh, sort of their skills sharp and, and groomed. So those are two primary objectives. The third objective is always sort of um, the monetization option for these kind of internal strategic projects. And in this case, um, as you can imagine, we're going to be releasing fuel price updates um, across the country from pump to pump. Uh, it gives us a good opportunity to partner with sponsoring um, uh, or partnering uh, sponsor pumps of BPs, engines, the like, which we're busy having conversations with for them to advertise to the audience to, you know, let them know that any other combos or other deals or savings that they might uh, be able to cash in on at the pump. So, yeah, it's an opportunity to access a, a market that's in a very specific niche what they want to uh you know they want to save at the pump and when you're making your trip to the petrol station you want to obviously maximize savings and considering petrol stations are locations which have various different business models they have shops they have you know take a lot or amazon pickup points etc um it's a good opportunity to allow consumers to know where they can maximize their savings in those trips how do you approach marketing an app like this because um uh uh, obviously, uh, in the world that you operate in, uh, you, you'll hear people saying, oh, you know, we're, we'll, we'll market it on various social media platforms. It's the easiest thing to do. But you're dealing perhaps with a market here that doesn't live their entire lives on the Internet or on social media. And you could really put this in front of people who aren't that technological, uh, uh, technologically savvy. But how do you reach them? I mean, uh, if I think about how we use the forecourt, you're dealing with a business that still hands out pamphlets um, at the pumps or in the forecourt stores to advertise their specials because they realize that that is the variety of a market that they're dealing with. How do you wrap, a bra uh, mm -hmm. wrap your brain around how uh, to market um, an app such as this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the first step is obviously exposure. Um, and once exposure uh, is sufficient, you know, I guess impressions to uh, a subsection of the market um, through organic reach, uh, it should reach this critical mass where enough people have heard or seen or have used it. And there has to obviously be a real value to the app and for the consumers to feel that value from the apps. That's one thing. Once they feel that value, they might share that with their uh, with their friends, with their family, you know, to help others save in this case. So it's really about a, you know, if you look at Eskom Push as a good example as well, it was the proliferance of the fact that there was an energy crisis and people needed a way to get that information. So if there's a real value to the application, um, naturally these things will sort of snowball by themselves by sort of being shared from person to person within their inner circles. Okay, fascinating stuff there. Founder of Full App, Fabio Longano, um, uh, joining us live there from Cape Town. Thank you so much for your time and your insights uh, this afternoon.